What is happening and welcome to another four-wheel drive talk episode and I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of familiar with where I'm at and if you happen to watch a video that I did two months ago on the RKS off-road purpose trailer, this thing right behind me here, you're going to recognize the space that I'm in. Now, it's funny because when I did this video, which was a walkthrough with the founders and owners and a lot of the staff that really spent a lot of time researching and putting this thing together to what it is right now today, when I was going through it, I really felt, I had a sense of, this is the pinnacle, this is the tip of the sword, it doesn't get any better. Let me share with you a story. Last month, I brought my son to the California Power Sports Expo up in, I think it was Pasadena, uh, where it was. Anyways, great show. Highly recommend it if you, if you want a good show to bring your, your family to. As we're walking in one of the warehouses, I recognize a logo. But it's on a trailer that I did not recognize. And it turns out, friends, this beast right here, RKS Off-Road, raised the bar even higher. They came out with a purpose, um, excuse me, a motive trailer here that is really, this thing really raises the bar. It's hard to say. When you, when you look at the amenities and the features that they crammed into the purpose-built trailer, the motive here raises it up quite a bit. So let me share with you what this video is going to be here. This is not going to be quite the lifestyle video. I'm gonna to get to that here in a moment. What this is going to be, when I, when I had the opportunity to speak with them at the show there, there's a ton of features that they've managed to put into this trailer here. And let me, let me clarify here. This is, yeah, I'm calling this a trailer, but this is much more than a trailer. This is a toy hauler, but not just any toy hauler, because as you can see, when you get inside of this thing, you can use it as a toy hauler. You can use it just as a big, massive space to enjoy the outdoors with. But going back to this, we're gonna be talking with both Travis and Elizabeth, who I'm gonna introduce you to you here just in a moment. We're gonna go through a lot of the features, a lot of the thought that went into this. Now, I know myself, I wanna find out how is this trailer different from the purpose-built trailer. Understanding a little bit as far as who this was designed for versus who this is designed for. So we're gonna be going through quite a bit of the features, a lot of the amenities, what makes this such an amazing piece of tech here, or off-road tech, I think we can get away with saying. So with that said, now if this is your first video that you've seen, well, you're gonna learn about from Elizabeth and Travis here in a moment. If you've seen the purpose-built trailer, well, you know who these guys are already. So we're gonna do the introduction regardless, and we're gonna find out what went into the thought process with this trailer. All right, guys, and here we are with Travis and Elizabeth with RKS Off-Road. Guys, this is quite amazing. Now, last time I was out here with the purpose built, I was floored with the amount of amenities and features that you guys have managed to cram into this trailer. Now, when we went to the expo last month, I was floored with this. I was quite surprised. And I appreciate you guys allowing me to come up here and kind of a, creating a part two, shall we say, of the purpose to motive. And if this is the first video that people are watching with you guys, can you guys give us a little background of who you are and how RKS came into existence? And then we'll dive into how the motive came into existence. Sure. So we are both from the automotive industry. Besides that, we rented out some trailers and RVs ourselves and learned that there's a, a gap and room for improvement. And that's how RKS, in a sense, uh, got created and incorporated. So the design principles are the same as in the automotive. You design properly in your 3D mass, you simulate, you do all your validation there, then you build up your prototypes, and this is what we built here too. So this is a pre-production validation trailer already, so you can see the fit and finishes, how it's crafted. It's all purpose-built to mm -hmm. make sure that whoever takes it out is happy with the results. And I'd like to add just, you know, fr coming from the automotive perspective, it's a it's a fresh perspective to the industry. So the industry and, and the trailer side of things has been doing a lot of their similar practices for the last few decades. Um, we are bringing a fresh look at how you can design a trailer differently from the ground up. And that's what we put into both of our models. And it just dawned me, uh, guys, the, in the beginning of this intro, I told you there was gonna be a bit of a lifestyle uh, aspect to this. The, in roughly about three weeks, I'm going to be taking this bugger out. And so in this particular video here, I'm going to kind of similar like last time, I'm going to take my 
trusty GoPro along. Travis and Elizabeth are going to show us some of the details. So this video is going to be more of, again, covering the features and what they put into this thing from an engineering standpoint. Uh, and then a few weeks from now, I'm going to be taking this thing out, yes, to Joshua Tree. And what excites me about this is there's a lot of features and it's a lot of functionality that's been put into this here. So this is going to be a trial by fire in a real world condition, a real world environment. We're going to see how this trailer behaves. I'm going to be towing it behind my Gladiator, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Now, if we can start things off, the, the purpose, this thing is a bit size difference from this. Can we start creating a little bit of a difference between the purpose and the motive? And actually, how did the motive, now this, the purpose, you guys have been working on this for a handful of years, correct? Yes. How did the motive come into the picture? Well, we wanted a different product for our customer base. The purpose is, besides the size you already pointed out, a uh, different target market, mm -hmm. right? So those are people who just want to take it uh, out for, we do have them a uh, couple, whatever, right? Perhaps two kids for the rooftop tent to um, use, but in essence, it's really a compact off-roading trailer. This guy is for the crew dad, where you want to take your kids out, you bring your toys, if you have some, if you want to bring them or not, where you have lots of space. So different personas going out. The common denominator, however, is still quality craftsmanship, and obviously both are off-road, off-grid, and on purpose fit. So that's the same thing regardless of the style of product you are choosing. Now, I heard, remember if you correct, this one has an 18 inch clearance in the bottom of, where's this one at? 20. 20? We can borrow a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy enough, you know, we had to stick with an 18 because this uh, purpose was designed to fit into a garage. So it was the compromise between where do you, where do you put the ground clearance versus the interior space. And so that was what we had to go through from a design element. Now, one of the first things, if you have these trailers side by side, and people are going to notice, this thing is substantially taller. Right. And so, I'm six foot, you're... Six two. Yeah. So, I know when I walk in this, I'm not, I have space to, to go. How are you doing in there? Oh, I'm doing great. I mean, I'm, I'm well, since I'm part of the design team, <laughs> I, all the designers have to suit it for me, so... Six foot two, um, or a little bit higher than, uh, taller than that, you're fine. Now, this one has the bathroom. One of the things that I absolutely loved about the Purpose trailer was, let's be real here, the bathroom. That ceramic toilet in there, you have that privacy space in there. Now this one, the thing I haven't, now, guys, I've been in this thing. I know it has its own uh, exclusive, its own dedicated space for a bathroom, but I haven't measured it. How does the, the size of that compare to there? You know, it's actually about the same size. Yeah. If you, it's a different shape, mm -hmm. but if you were to take the floor space, it's about the same size. I thought it'd be bigger. It feels bigger in this one, doesn't bigger? it? Yeah. It's because it's because it's an overall tall space, and it, and you know when people look at it, it's amazing the the response you get. A lot of people feel like it's like their residential bathroom, but in reality, it is compact. It just doesn't feel that way. Now I'm going to take a step back because of the as I'm looking at the purpose here. You mentioned this is a this is a prototype or this is a working prototype, right? It's a pre-production. The pre-production, okay. Prototype, yes. So there's gonna be things that are gonna be changed on this. Like I noticed, there's right here we have this right. spare tire right here. Right. You guys will have spare tires going along the back there, yes. right? No, was it? Nice. One or two tires. Two. Two tires. Nice. And this whole back. Can you expound on the audience because I think one of the big selling points for this trailer here is you can actually put a side by side in there. Mm -hmm. At the show, at the expo, they had this, actually I know it could fit in there already, at the expo they had the side by side. And when you look at this, it's this is a pretty good sized vehicle that they're able to fit inside of this here. So if you have side by sides, my question is here, how do you get the deck to come down here though? I'll show you. All right. That's easy. <laughs> that is amazing. Now, this door, this deck here, I mean, this is designed 
to drive a side-by-side -side open, right? That's right. A two-passenger side-by-side can fit in here. Can-Am or a Polaris. Now, Elizabeth, you definitely look athletic, but you are holding that up effortlessly. So I, for the sake of people watching this, how is that possible? You're holding it up with just a few feet. Yeah. I mean, the door has some weight to it, but we have springs in there, and they obviously help support with the lifting. Got it. Okay, so we're looking at three very large springs on this. Okay, very good. But obviously, I'm very. <laughs> I mean, she's from Austria, and that is where Arnold Schwarzenegger's from, so it's, it's in the food. All right, friends, so one of the big burning questions that I really wanted to see if we could get answered here is from a construction standpoint, are both of these trailers manufactured the same way? They are both the same. Same principle, we still are using our polypropylene honeycomb composite uh, walls with the fiberglass skin. In addition, however, on this motive bell, we are using this panel just to support with the strength of the floor because you are loading in heavy gear, whereas in the purpose, obviously, you're not doing that. So therefore, the weight uh, ratio needs to be a different one and the support. I have a question for you guys. So I know a lot of trailers, a lot of camper manufacturers, they use aluminum for the walls or they use wood. Now, when I look at something like this, first off, the part that you guys can't make out, which I'm guessing is probably one of the reasons why you use this, this is really light. It's surprising when you when you see this this chunk right here. Now this is what the walls are made out of, you say, right? It's the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. It's definitely amazing. It's it's funny how light this is. So what are the reasons why you guys build out of this versus aluminum or wood? Durability, weight, and strength. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And the other factor is going to be when she talks durability, it's its resilience to water. Um, it's, it's also the stiffness of the board. So this, this, when you deal with wood or any substrates that use like a foam core, you get some water in there and it'll actually create separation between the panels. And that's the last thing you want with these walls, especially. So with these, because it's cellular, if there is ever a break in one of those cells, it would never be able to transfer to the rest. We actually literally have these going through, uh, we, I had it going through a, a, a rainstorm wow. as the panels were coming from the supplier and not a single piece of separation. Doesn't bother it. Now, I believe on the motive, or excuse me, on the purpose, you had illustrated that if with aluminum, if some were to hit it, mm -hmm. that creates a little bit of ding. With this here, it behaves a little different. Yeah, the fiberglass is much more resilient for that. So if you were to just do a light impact, it absorbs it and you don't have a ding for the rest of the life of the trailer. Uh, whereas with aluminum, you get the ding in it. Now you need to figure out how you're going to pull <clears throat> pull that out to correct it. Interesting. And now something like this, does this have... Now let's be real here. We're in Southern California. It gets pretty warm out. So you probably know where I'm leading with this here. Yeah. Aluminum can create kind of like an oven effect because there's not much R factor that goes along with it. Right. Does this have any R factor? It R6. does. It's an R6 value. Wow, okay. So it's much better from that perspective as well. And we, it's not that we don't use aluminum on our trailer. We use it for our custom uh, profiles, our aluminum profiles. Um, but we use them in such a way that we actually insulate between them and the interior space. Gotcha. But the, the main core of the walls is made from this. You got it. Okay. Yep. Very interesting. Which I'm sure, because this thing has an AC unit, so it means it's going to be much more efficient for that to run in a high heat environment. It's really important for us as off-grid is, is one of the focuses of this company in producing our product. Off-grid means efficiency. So we want to go with the optimal efficiency. We want the optimal power management and water management. So you're right. That AC unit that you just referred to is a 12 volt AC unit that only consumes 55 amps at high power. And on low power, it only consumes about 20, 22, 23 amps is what we reported. Wow, so this is actually a pretty good segue into talking about some of the features. And we're going to stick about that, the AC unit there as a kind of an entrance into that. So that AC unit that you guys have up on the roof of this here, how long can that run in this? 
you, you want to hear it? Uh, so the base trailer comes with lithium batteries and comes with 400 amp hours of battery. Wow. Um, so technically, it should last up to eight hours on high power. Um, with the upgrade, you can go up to 800 amp hours of battery. <laughs> and so it's an incredible amount of power. But the idea is that then if you are in extreme weather conditions, 120 degree Fahrenheit conditions, you want to be able to last lo longer. Um, 800 amp hours should go about 13 to 14 hours. Wow. So one of the things that we think about when we think about the cabinets is lighting. Um, so you'll notice that the hinges are on the bottom here, which is not typical in a trailer. And so what we've done is we made it so that this hinge is completely down. And so instead of having a door that might be in your way to get things loaded in, you have this entire space, but also we positioned all the lighting right here. So you get natural lighting coming into here without any additional lights. Well thought out. Okay, so now, actually if we go to the other side, this is a toy hauler and you likely have helmets. We designed this so that each one will fit two helmets in each overhead compartment. All right, so Travis, on this side, I'm noticing quite a bit of electronics. Can you walk us through what we're looking at here? Sure. Uh, so let's start top to bottom then. Uh, at the top here, we have an MTX audio system. Uh, which is Bluetooth, um, Sirius XM, um, you know, all the basics that you would have in an audio system there, which uh, goes to the interior speakers. And then you can also fade them to the exterior speakers that are just off the back. Wonderful. Very good. And let me turn that off there before it starts playing my music. Um, <laughs> uh, right here is the Truma AquaGo, which is an instant hot water heater. Uh, the hot water heater is located in the uh, front utility cage and as an instant hot you're not then wasting a lot of LP gas to keep something heated up um, so it's on demand and then it also has an eco mode which is great for people who are in colder regions you switch it to eco mode and it prevents the water heater from freezing so it actually at 40 degrees it'll actually maintain that and keep the uh, water in there from freezing over we love Truma Truma is a, a fantastic <laughs> brand um, Below it, as you can see, is another Truma. So this is the variable heating uh, furnace. And what we love with that is that it only consumes as much power as needed to warm the unit. So a lot of the other heaters, it's on or off. But with the Truma, it's, it's on as much as it needs to be on. And so we have the Truma furnace is actually located again in the front uh, utility cage, which means that the noise stays outside. We wanna to try to keep it comfortable inside. And then the ducting comes in and actually goes into the floor areas. You see there's two uh, vents down below here. And there's also a couple of vents near the entry door. And there's one in the bathroom because we don't want a cold bathroom when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> no. Now, is that running on uh, diesel, propane, electric? What does that run on? Uh, this one is, uh, is propane. Wonderful. Um, we've been looking into diesel, but we've decided for right now we're going to stick with the propane. Very good. And below this is our management system for power management. You can see right now we are at 75% uh, battery capacity. We're inverting from the battery right now. Um, I'm going to just thumb it to the side here. It gives you more information here about like status and how long you have. And then here is the main screen. And right now we don't have the tanks hooked up, but we will be hooking up the tanks here so that you can actually monitor your fresh water uh, gray water and black water and even uh, you can have it monitor uh, fuel tanks as well well done so that's the, the the electronic brain of the trailer itself it is yeah and it's all on a touch screen and it's also bluetooth enabled so you can actually access it through your phone wow yeah fantastic now shifting down here a little bit while we're we're jibber jabbering here i'm noticing the the stove here can you talk a little bit about this yeah, um, we originally started off our design going with the typical LP gas stove. Um, however, as we were moving through it, one of our things you notice from the purpose is that it had no gas lines inside the box. And to us, this is a safety feature. Um, and we wanted to continue that here. So what we decided to do is actually 
moved to an induction stove instead, and we upgraded the inverter to a higher wattage of inverter. So here is an induction stove, and the nice thing about it is on this fold down countertop, so that when you load in your toys, it's completely out of the way. And it's easy, single finger, to latch back up. Well done, and that's so the two burner. Well, two, two burner, 1800 watt induction stove. Now, I know me, when I'm cooking, I get quite a bit of, uh, well, you might have some some uh, smoke or some odors or this or that coming out of this here. You so burn your stuff, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> so I see there's a, a large window here. Is there any sort of vents that you guys have or will be adding? Yeah, we do have uh, a vent here, but I, I like to call this like the, uh, this is the serving window. So you can just serve your stuff like <laughs> taco truck style. Um, and the beautiful thing with this too is obviously you can close it off, but there is um, and a lighting underneath here. So there's some great lighting that you can have uh, for your cooking. I like to see my stuff so I don't burn my stuff. And then here we have the fan. A little bit. So with the fan, um, it's a three inch inline fan and the outflow is directly outside. So if you were to look outside on the side of the unit, you'll see uh, the outflow. Well done. You guys really thought of everything. It's funny, when I originally saw this, I was wondering, this this trailer, this camper is designed for a for a side-by-side uh, -side to come in here. How is that going to get in here with this here? That would be a really kind of a awkward uh, maneuvering there, but it's really slick that that folds right down. And there's even another countertop on the other side for additional counter space that folds down the same way. Very cool. And then, of course, you have a very deep stainless steel sink. Uh, this is, now, this goes into, this drains into which gray water on this, correct? No, not on this one. Uh, so what you'll notice with our units, because we recycle the gray water for flushing the toilet, we don't want any food matter getting into there. So actually our kitchen sinks all drain to the final dumping tank. Very good. Very cool. And actually while we're looking here, I just let's see if I can get it here. So you have both of these sinks. Now here's the bathroom and of course the kitchen. And folks, you can see just how deep these are. You know one of the things that I when I look at other campers that they have these very shallow kind of plasticky looking sinks. Uh, I, I love the stainless steel and I love how deep these are as well because with this you can legitimately wash dishes inside of it and uh, it looks quite very durable as well. Yeah and one of the things that people don't see is that uh, we put a uh, filter on the cold water of the kitchen sink so when you're filling up your pots and pans it actually has a water filter just like we have in the purpose that filters down to 0.5 microns. So that way, at least you're getting additionally filtered water out of the sink when you're filling up the pot for like some pasta or something like that. Very good. All right, so now, Travis, we are in the front of the, the trailer itself. So now this is a working prototype you guys have mentioned, right? Yes. Now, as I understand, you guys, the main door to the bathroom, you guys are going to be changing this, correct? Or potentially changing it? Potentially changing it. We're investigating other ways that we can do this door. Um, there was one of the uh, things about the show is that we listen to people's feedback. And uh, one of the things that people notice is that if you were a little more of a person, then you had a hard time with that door swinging in. And so what we wanted to do is adjust for that. So we wanted to do, we're looking into a pocket door. Uh, where it can slide in, or possibly a bifold door um, that it doesn't have to intrude into the space as much. Wonderful. That's so uh, very slick. So, and that is, as I said a moment ago, out there, this really does feel a little bit larger than the one out of the purpose. Isn't that incredible? And, and I think a lot of it is the white walls. You know, we do white purposely because it gives you, even though this is really a compact trailer in essence but it gives you that essence of space. Speaking of space, what is the size of this camper? So the uh, interior of the box is just over 15 feet and the width is just over seven feet wide. 
Now, one of the things that also I find pretty impressive is that the deck that we walked up, that people will drive their side-by-sides up on here, that in the future will turn into a deck. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, there are certain things, as we were talking about this being a working prototype, so this is what this is our tinker space, mm -hmm. right? So this is where our technical person comes in and tries new things with routing the wiring to improve things. Um, this is where in the bathroom that you're standing in, there's actually a access to an overhead storage, which is right now an opening, but we're gonna look into either sliding doors or maybe even a roll-up door for that. The rear deck, um, we wanna look into a way that we can firmly stabilize it as like a patio so that you can extend the space. So a lot of what we're doing is, even though this is a, a smaller trailer, for being able to fit a two passenger side by side is incredible. How do we expand that without sliding out the walls? Like a lot of the RVs and trailers you see today. And we don't have that benefit of sliding out walls because we have to keep this interior space intact. So. You do it through the rear ramp, and we do it with the sky deck, giving you an area where you can go above everybody else and have a great point of view, but it extends your living space. You know, it's funny, Travis, the whole time, now, we were talking earlier about that deck. That's the reason why, obviously, I know that, folks. Uh, and I, w I really love the idea with the deck because, as I saw, again, just visualizing the lifestyle of owning this trailer. I visualize having your barbecue, maybe a chair back there. I like to grill. And while the stove in here is fantastic, I would be grilling out there half the time. And you're with the deck there, you're off the ground. Mm -hmm. And you're just talking about the square footage of this place because that deck strikes me as easily probably about another third of the space that's in here. And I guess where I'm leaning with this, I'm forgetting but there's a sky deck on top of this thing that is quite quite in size as well. It is, and, and, and you mentioned barbecue. Let's say like you wanna do your gas barbecue. One of the things we haven't even talked about yet is that there is a high pressure quick release gas line in our utility cage. So you can actually run a line from that to your barbecue on the back deck and hang out up there, but maybe you want to barbecue up on the roof. That's I awesome. mean, it sounds crazy <laughs> to some people, but it sounds great to me. Oh yeah, I, I would agree with you there, especially the, as I understand, one of the first people that ordered one of these, their motive, no pun intended, their motive uh, for picking this up, they want to go to the Formula One races to be able to sit on the top and watch the race. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Without saying too much about the customer, uh, the, what we're finding is that a lot of people are attracted to this rooftop deck. And, you know, we came up with that because the purpose also has that capability. You can go on the rooftop securely. Well, in order to do that with something like this, you have to have not only strong panels, but you need to have strong reinforcements from a durability standpoint. So what you see above me right now is actually a false ceiling. It's not that panel that we were looking at earlier. Interesting. So in between this, we actually have aluminum rafters uh, along the ceiling here, and that's providing additional stiffness for rooftop plate time. Wow. Yeah. So going back, to the side the space with this here it's easy to look at this from the exterior and you see the space and it is a grand it really presents itself very well very very for being categorized as a compact toy hauler this really presents itself with a lot of space then when you factor in that rear deck you factor in the the roof on this that you can actually get up there and it's very usable space this thing has quite a bit, it, it leaves a big footprint behind. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, I mean, when we look at it as a, in a CAD model, right? We do everything in CAD and mock everything up. You don't really get that feel yet because it's all digital. But when we build it, we have a great designer who thinks through colors and how do we make this feel more roomy from a visual perspective. And then we have some really creative people that we brainstorm about how can we utilize the space even better? So every part of this trailer is fully utilized. Yeah. I mean, and even like something as fancy as like in our kitchen, we have pull out drawers. You know, right now this one has a pull out pantry, 
but we're having pull out drawers. We have a safe in here that, you know, <laughs> who puts a safe in their trailer? We do. And it's because we want to safeguard our stuff. I mean, we even have some people coming to us that are talking about living in this trailer. And so if you're going to live in the trailer, you need that home feel. And that's, that's important to us too. Now folks, one of the things I'm going to do my absolute best between this video and of course the one heading out the Joshua Tree. As, uh, as Travis is talking here, I'm realizing something that's really important that I want to present. Now I saw this trailer at the California Power Sports Expo out there. Yeah. And it's funny folks, when I came into it here as I'm setting up my cameras and figuring out you know, the direction of the flow of the video that we're going to put together here for you, it struck me that, wow, I didn't see that, or I didn't, there's a lot of aspects with there. There's a really a lot to take in with this trailer. You guys have really thought, and that's the thing that as I, you know, from the the cabinets, the, the thought that went into those coming down, the drop deck here, the deck out there, all of these little things here, there's a lot to really capture. And I hope I do, and you know, one of the things that, and I say this because I'm really itching. There's a lot of, I see a lot of lights, a handful of buttons going down this arm right over here. Uh, and there's a remote right here. I'm guessing that's for a fridge or something. Uh, this is actually for the awning outside, a 13 foot <laughs> armless awning, and it's on remote control. Um, it's one of the two remotes that come with the unit. One is for the AC unit. There's a remote control for that and for the awning. So that's so awesome. Now, what are these other switches over here for? Uh, so if you don't mind me, I'm going to pivot over here and uh, we have the um, here is for the bed. Um, this is a switch that has a uh, cover over it so that somebody doesn't accidentally activate it. Um, but that is to lower and raise the queen size bed, um, which is on a powered actuator. These knobs are for the interior and exterior and they're on variable so we can set the mood if that's the right time for it and bring those dimmers down. Um, and then these are for other lighting like foot lighting and things like that. Um, this we just put into this unit so that we know that the power is on. Um, this is going to be replaced uh, with something else later. And then here we have a plug. All of our 110 outlets are all 4.0 USBs with the outlet, all of them. So when you fold this guy up, you have your power outlet here ready to go to plug in that blender or whatever you need. That is slick. You know, I really love the lighting down there as well. Yeah, we did the floor lighting that way. So then that way, uh, at nighttime, I know a lot of people wanted to have like a night light. And instead, we designed our own. Something that gives just a little bit of ambient light near where the bathroom door is. So you can find your way without turning on everything else. Purpose of the camera is showing, can we point out the safe in this thing? Right, so inside the closet is the safe. That is an uh, upgraded safe. It comes with a smaller safe that's more like a cube safe. Um, this is the upgraded safe that can hold up to six rifles for people who are huntsmen or, um, you know, or whatever reason they might want to carry something like that. But carries it fills up the entire back of that and it's mounted in in such a way that there's no way that you can remove this without tearing apart the entire trailer. So now I notice a, a button up on the top of that uh, safe. Is that uh, triggered by my fingerprint? It is. It's biometric. Um, it's uh, made by a company called MyCube. Uh, we just partnered up with them, and that that uh, biometric can hold up to ten uh, fingerprints. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Now, right next to it, this is. The pantry, correct? It is, and right now this is a full pull-out pantry. Um, and so 
Uh, this will change uh, for the future models. Um, what it's going to change to is it's going to be another opening door, just like the closet space here, um, but it'll have pull-out drawers individually, so it doesn't have this the big pull-out coming out here. And what you'll notice behind here, we left it uncovered just for you and your viewers. This is where there will be a false wall and the inverter and the batteries, the lithium batteries are stored in this space. It'll have a false wall that will be put into there with its own fan system. And there's some important things about that that are great for cold weather people, cold weather travelers. So the important thing here is You'll notice that this is located just above where the powered cooler is. The powered cooler generates some heat. And so that heat actually rises and it's, it rises into that cavity where the electronics are. So batteries, you don't want them too cold to be the most efficient. So that heat generated by your refrigerator is actually being used as a supplement to keeping it warm inside that compartment but also the inverters in that same compartment, so they help each other stay warm. And then it has its cooling system, as a air cooling system, that's triggered at like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it gets too warm, then the fan kicks on and it'll draw the air out. But otherwise, this is a natural way of designing it for cold weather. Very good. Now, you mentioned the cooler down below. Yeah. What talk us a little bit about this now? It, it, what's funny in my my trailer that I go heading out with? I have a 62 liter, and it looks tiny compared to this thing right here. How big is that? That's a 96 liter. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually amazing enough. That is the same size we use in our purpose trailer. <laughs> that is huge. Now, are you is that on a roller? I'm guessing it is. Um, so this is designed to be on a roller. And what we love with the Truma is that you can open it up from either side. So you can actually switch this over and have it so you can access it from outside. Um, and right now what you notice is that it's viewable here. We're actually working on ways that we might even do a, um, a roll down door that covers this completely. So a very nice finish. Another good example of a moving prototype. It is, it is. It's, it's about testing the concept first and, and experiencing it. And that's really important to us before we release a product out to, um, out to the market. And, and speaking of which, not to get too far off, because I, I want to finish going through the details here, but I think it's a good part to bring up in terms of you know, we're we're sitting in uh, April of 2022. When do you suspect the first actual production units of the motive will be rolling out? Great question. You know, we're going to build one more prototype because uh, that's the way we do it in automotive. Um, so we'll build one more and then we're going into production. Uh, we expect the first units to come off the line for our first customers in summer of this year. Of 2022? Of 2022. Oh, that's only just a handful of months away. It is. Tick tock. <laughs> it is. Very busy. <laughs> Weekends and all. <laughs> wow. Very, very impressive. Okay. And I see here there is, now obviously the door heading out. This yep. is a full size door. Yeah. It's a, it's a very wide door uh, that we use here. Uh, so you'll notice that it has a solid step and it really is a solid step. Uh, and what we really like about it is that it stows away, and let me go ahead and attach it in, Very good. out of the way so that when you're off-roading uh, or anything else, you don't damage your, uh, your steps. Very slick. So that's pretty much fastened in there. Now, one of the things I noticed here, seeing that we're over on the, we've managed to make our way out to the side here. Now, with the purpose, there's a single axle. Now I'm seeing, of course, there's two axles here. What does that translate for the experience in this trailer? So, you know, with the, uh, with the purpose trailer, it's uh, independent suspension because it's made a little more for the off-road. Um, it has a mo little more of a focus on the off-road. This trailer, it's 
off-road, but these are solid axles instead. And the reason why is from a durability perspective, the solid axles, especially with the beefy axles these are, are going to last you a lot longer. So we went with tandem axles because if you've ever gone to like Pismo Beach or out to the desert, it's one of these things that you see a lot of trailers sink down into the sand. And that is just the worst thing to have to deal with. So going with tandem helps prevent that because you have more surface area. But what you'll also notice, Alex, is that these are all-terrain tires and they're wide and beefy. These are 34-inch all-terrains. I was gonna ask the size. They, they look really, they look quite big. Yeah, so having that additional footprint will make us a, this trailer, along with the light weight of this trailer, which is only a 5,000 pound dry weight, you won't sink in the sand, even with it loaded up with all your goodies. Okay, so while we're over here, these are, these are some very big tires. Can you talk to us a little bit about, between the tires, uh, the braking system on this, and what are we looking at down here? So, um, you can see that style is really important to us um, throughout the unit. And so these wheels are 20 inch wheels. Uh, definitely not typical on a trailer, mm -hmm. but we want to leave like this, this, this lasting impression. When somebody first sees this trailer, they immediately know it's special. Um, this adds to that. What you also notice behind the wheel is that we added, um, we have uh, disc brakes back there and we wanted to make sure that people can see the disc brakes because it just looks cooler than drum brakes. But the disc brakes have a functional advantage over drum, which of course is the reason in automotive why they transitioned from drum brakes of the old cars to discs is that they perform better and they're um, much more consistent in their braking ability. These wheels look fantastic as well. Yeah, it's just, when you roll down the street in this thing, everybody <laughs> notices, everybody. All right, folks, so we are in the nose of the motive and Travis, this thing really presents itself. Again, we're talking inside. I'm like, wow, this thing is quite grand. On the front, it's quite grand. Now, yeah. if you can walk us through, there's a lot going on behind all of this, correct? There is. Uh, there's a lot going on behind and there's a lot of attributes that went into the thought process about designing this front nose. This is the Truma Ooh. AquaGo. This is the instant hot water heater. Um, so the, uh, remember we talked about like we don't like to have gas lines inside the box. So all of our gas related stuff is outside in the utility cage. It's the same thing with the Purpose trailer. It's just safer that way, and you use less gas lines and things like that, less risk of a gas leak. So here we have the Truma AquaGo, and when we open this up, you're gonna see the furnace is located nearby. And then coming down here, before we go diving into what's behind these panels here, yeah, extra shower, that's really slick. So if you come back from a dirty day or you have a dog that needs to be washed, now is that both hot and cold? It is. Um, you know, a lot of trailers and RVs, they'll have that, uh, uh, the basic design of a shower, right? It has like this flimsy looking cord and everything, and it just has this, this cheap looking uh, uh, shower head. We didn't like that. So what we did is we went with this brand where you actually have a sprayer that you can spray your dog down or you know, wash yourself off before you get into the trailer. And it has hot and cold right here in the front utility cage. Well done. And what are we looking at right here? That's a high pressure uh, gas line with a quick connect. So when we talked about you wanting to do your barbecuing. There we go. This is where you tap into, um, you run your gas line and you, you get a gas line that's like 20 feet or so, and you can just run it from your tanks that are in here. You have two 20 pound uh, exchangeable tanks. You know, it's funny. Um, I just shot a, um, a Overland trailer buying guide and one of the items that I speak about in there is the hitch. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at this and this thing is Jesus, I've not seen anything like that. Can you talk a little bit about this hitch? Yeah, you know, we, um, we didn't start out with the McHitch, but we are very happy that we found them. 
Um, this is a full articulating hitch um, on a U-joint here. And what we love about it is that on the registering side that mounts to your vehicle, it's actually like a funnel. So as you're backing it up, I, I know you probably experienced this too, you, you back up most of the way and then you're like, oh, am I just over it or not? And you might have to go outside your vehicle and go back in. <laughs> With this one, I never have to do that. Um, through my camera, I can see where this goes all the way through into this funnel and it clicks into place. So I actually see it register in and then after it clicks into place, I put a pin through it and hold it down firmly. So it's probably um, the best hitch we could use on any trailer like this. All right, Travis, so we're over on the passenger side. Can we talk about what we're gonna be, what's going on on this side? So you see some uh, vent outlets here. Uh, the smaller vents are actually for the water and uh, waste tanks. Um, because we want to make the sky deck a true sky deck without a bunch of smells coming up through there, um, we actually uh, vent through here instead. Um, and then you see the big cover there, that's actually from the bathroom fan. Um, instead of having like your typical RV where you, you have the rooftop fantastic, let's say, we want that rooftop space for us to hang out. So instead, we do a four inch inline fan and it's a quiet fan on a variable speed. So that way you can use it for ventilating the entire trailer or ventilating just the bathroom, but it comes out right there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so in the utility cage, um, especially when you're talking about um, going camping, storage is one of the top three items that people desire. So you'll notice that inside we had five large overhead compartments um, and also you have the under sink compartments. Well, outside we have this closet space. And so this right now, you can see some of the raw material here. Um, this is all gonna be finished by a company we're working with that does race garages, race trailer garage space. So this is all gonna be done in like an aluminum, um, but this gives you the true idea as to how much room you have. Wow. There's quite a bit, and I can see there's two 20 pound propane tanks up, up here. Yes. See a lot of the, the water lines going up and down, and oh, that's right, that's the, Those are the hot water lines. heater, correct? This is the hot water heater, yep. okay. and just behind it is the furnace. Gotcha, okay, so the black lines, that's your hot air going through the various different uh, zones inside this thing, correct? Yeah, and what you'll notice is you're gonna see that on the other side as well. So when the furnace turns on, this is actually keeping your front cage warm. So it radiates the heat from the furnace into your cage. So if you're going to camping in a cold environment, that's gonna keep your pipes and some of the important uh, equipment up here that's dealing with water above freezing it will help and if you do the winter package we actually have heat pads that also get used in order to prevent that from happening that's right and the the winter package that's because your water tanks are along the bottom of this correct they are and we always we we completely cover the underside anyways but when you do the winter package then we add insulation and we add heat pads on every tank and then also around the pumps we add heat pads now is that a constant on or is it uh, is it turned on by the, the owner? It's turned on by the owner, but it's triggered by temperature. So okay. it has a thermal switch. So even if you turn it on, it doesn't mean that they're all consuming power. Um, they're on a thermal switch. Okay, so here we are on the driver's side. What do we have going on behind this door? Okay, so on this side, we have all of our utilities. So this is our utility closet. And right now you see a lot of the raw wiring. Um, again, this is a functional prototype, so they're constantly tinkering with this stuff. But what you will notice is that our fuses, our switches, our main on off, our plug-in, it's all in this area. Um, and then below this, you'll notice all of our pumps. This is the pump for the toilet, for the gray water flushing. 
And then this is the pump for the fresh water with an accumulator tank. And that's right. You're saying the finished product, this will be all aluminum. It will be. Um, it'll be aluminum and there'll be insulation that separates the aluminum from the house so that you don't get that thermal transfer. So one of the things I'm noticing here as we're opening up more doors and more doors, there is a ton of storage. When I was inside this thing, kind of opening, you know, you know the routine, curiosity gets the best of you. So I'm opening up all these cabinets and I'm like, there's a lot of space here. There's a lot of storage here. Now we're up here and I assume because you know, from the propane tanks, the furnace, all that other stuff, this would be pretty much full, unusable for any additional space. There's a lot of storage up here. There's a ton of storage here. There is. I mean, and this is where we call this the utility side because our intent is to have it so that you can hook your um, all your uh, power uh, cords and your um, your dump hose all inside here. And when I say dump hose, a lot of people think the big three inch, but you may recall in our purpose, we use actually a regular hose because we have a macerator on our um, waste tanks. So this would use a regular hose, which is an orange color. So you don't mix those two up, um, but it literally expels the waste out. This is where you would hang all your stuff. Now, Travis, I'm noticing, I'm not recognizing, what's that tank for right there? Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really special for our toilet. Um, remember, we talked about it having a gray flush function. Mm -hmm. Well, when you flush with the gray, you don't want the smells. So that is actually a conditioner tank that siphons into that water line for the gray flush. Interesting. Okay. And then uh, what's not in here yet um, is the winch. So up in this upper corner here will be a, a UTV winch with a 2,500 pound uh, pole capacity on it. And the cable is gonna actually pass through into where the pull out pantry area is. So that way you can just hook up your UTV and then by remote control, you just bring the UTV in because otherwise it'll be hard to get out of the UTV once it's in the garage. Uh, that's an option that people can option up for. And uh, speaking of storage, Alex, we do have one more compartment on this nose. You guys are full of surprises. Oh boy, I tell you, there's a lot of hidden gems in this. <laughs> it's like an Easter egg. So here, you have a storage compartment that's suitable for a generator. That's a big, gen that's a big space for a big generator. That is a big space for a big generator for sure. Um, we're sizing it so that you can get at least like a 2300 watt, somewhere around there, uh, generator. Uh, a lot of people have their own generators anyway, so what we did is we just made a compartment for it, and that way they can put their Honda or whatever make and model they have. Yeah, that's a, that's a deep, that's a really deep space. Really, so now when you guys go with the finish, the ultimately the finished product, are you gonna keep it white or is that gonna be aluminum finish? It's gonna be aluminum, but all the aluminum will be powder coated. Nice. Um, and we're trying to see if we can keep it white because we like the roominess and the clean, you know, the clean feel of it. Um, we're experimenting with different colors. Very cool. Um, and now I don't know if this is a good time to tell you about, there's one more storage compartment that I can't show you yet. Um, however, there is gonna be a storage compartment that's under the floor in the rear of this trailer. Um, it's one of the things that we didn't account for when we first started building this unit, so we're not integrating it in this particular unit, uh, but the next prototype will have a large underfloor storage compartment, which you can even put ice in, it'll even have a valve in there so that you can drain it. Wow, that's pretty, oh, that's right, because this trailer is quite a bit longer than the purpose, and, and along the purpose, you have those massive water tanks that go or run along the very bottom of that, correct? That's correct. So this, this frame is laid out very similar to the purpose trailer, mm -hmm. but now this is three feet longer. So actually, we have this three-foot cavity, and like we talked about inside, we want to utilize every bit of space. So we're actually designing it so that you can lift up the floor panel and have subfloor storage in there. Um, we wanna make it so it has a drain valve because we were thinking we'd put ice in there with drinks. So that way people can just pop that open and have an extended freezer or refrigerator. So it's essentially 
ballparkish around a three foot by six foot space. Yes. That's a lot. Of that's a that's a big cooler. <laughs> it is, uh, and there will definitely be a reinforcement underneath that to yeah. make sure you can put more weight. That's awesome. Yeah, we're very excited about it. All right, guys. Well, I'm on top of this thing, so unfortunately for me, my fun is done or getting close to it. But I climbed up here because I wanted to be able to give a sense of just how high the sky deck is on the motor compared to something that we went out with last time. The purpose you're really up quite off the ground a bit. Now, one thing I do want to point out, this being a pre-production kind of work in progress. Now, the finished model, they're gonna have a complete rail system that's gonna come around here. There's gonna be a bench right here. This is gonna be quite a lot of fun up here. Now it's that time of the video, of course, guys, where I'm gonna remind you that stay tuned in roughly about a few weeks or so, I'm gonna be taking this beast out to Joshua Tree, California, which Man, I cannot wait. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay tuned in for that. All right, guys, well, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff. So if you found some value with this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you're currently not subscribed to the channel, friend, what are you waiting for? We'd love to have you part of the family, and last but not least, smash, crush that bell, so therefore you're notified every single time that I come out with a video just like this one, actually including the upcoming Joshua Tree one where I take motive out there. Now, you guys get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure. Well, how the hell am I supposed to get down here? Hey, guys! Help! Hey, guys. How do I get down?